What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanna to talk about another bad anxiety habit that I had and that was constantly and obsessively checking my blood pressure. Go ahead and smash the like button down below if you're ready to kick anxiety in the butt and leave me a comment and let me know if this is something that you deal with. It is important to know that you are not alone if you struggle with anxiety, health anxiety, OCD, panic disorder, social, I can go on and on and on, depression. And that's what this channel is about, to first let you know and to find relief and comfort in knowing that you are not alone. That was a huge turning point in my recovery when I started this channel and started making videos. I saw people were like, me too, wow, I didn't know, you know, somebody else dealt with this. I was like, holy crap, I don't feel like I'm losing my mind. So welcome here if you're new, subscribe. Uh, and, and welcome to the community, okay? Welcome to the community. So, like the last video where I talked about obsessively checking my heart rate, I had cardiophobia for two and a half years. I had health anxiety for five. So those first two and a half years, my fears and concerns were centered around my heart. So I had the chest pain, the numbness, the tingling, sharp, dull pains, crushing pains, fast, really fast heart rate, tachycardia, and then something else, I had high blood pressure. And anxiety can cause this. Now I will say, go get your initial reassurance from a doctor, okay? Do it, all right? It took me two months of just being in fear and trying to go off of something that my mom said, who's a nurse, uh, you know, trying to hold it together, and I probably did a lot of damage in those two months by not hurrying and going to get some initial reassurance from a professional, okay? Um, so go do that if you haven't. I know some of you are probably in that debacle that I was in. I mean, I can't bear knowing that I have heart disease, so I'm just not gonna go, I'm too scared to go. It's a win-win situation, and I wish that you would see it like that. You know, we're being irrational. We need to bring it down, try to be a little bit more rational, and realize it's a win-win. Even if we find out that there's an issue with our heart, we can now get treated for it, and we can make better decisions, and we can do whatever we got to do to get better and healthier, right? But there's even even better chance that you're going to be told that this is anxiety, okay? So if you haven't gone to get checked, do it because I'm not a doctor. I'm just here to talk about the anxiety portion through my experience. And if you've been told that you're healthy, then this video is for you. If you haven't gotten reassurance, stop the video, head over to the doctor, make an appointment or something, okay? Um, so, in the beginning, when I had my first panic attack, you know, I, I told you I typed in all the symptoms and um, it told me heart attack. So then I was obsessed thinking that I had a heart problem, right? My mom came and picked me up after that six hour panic attack that I had. I was begging her to get me quicker, but she kind of knew that I was probably having some anxiety issues versus a heart problem. And she picked me up and it had been about two hours after my panic had ended. I was with her at work. Um, again, she was a nurse and she checked my blood pressure, you know, to try to see where it was at. And it was around 160 over like 100, 105. And that was two hours after my adrenaline had stopped like really flowing through my body, right? The fight or flight response. That just shows you how anxiety can affect your blood pressure even when you're not having a panic attack. So that freaked me out. And she tried to let me know like, look, Trey, this is okay, it's normal. Um, you've been here a few times in your life. Like, so, you know, try not to worry about this, but it was just embedded, it was embedded. And again, over the next couple months before I went to the doctor to get checked out, I was terrified and I started to check my blood pressure. Now, I didn't have a fancy blood pressure machine or anything like that like some of you have. If you have been told by a doctor that you're healthy and you're fine and that you, and you haven't been instructed to check your blood pressure, get rid of that blood pressure machine, okay? I'll come back to that in a second. But I didn't have access to that. The only time I had access to a blood pressure machine was whenever I went to Walgreens or if I went to Walmart, yes, driving there multiple times a day to check my blood pressure. Now, why didn't I buy one? I don't know. I don't know if it was because I wasn't smart or didn't think about it, but I'm glad, okay? Because there was one particular time that I stayed with my mom and I used her blood, uh, blood pressure machine, excuse me, all freaking day. All day I was hooked to that thing, checking my blood pressure. And I know many of you have been told and you know, and I didn't know at the time that the two times that you need to check, if you're gonna check, is gonna be right after you wake up for an accurate reading and then right before you go to sleep for an accurate reading. I'm checking it both arms every few minutes, right? Needing that constant external reassurance, right? Sometimes it would be like 125 and then it'd be 170, you know what I mean? Like you'd go back and forth, back and forth. I had no idea. I wasn't a professional and I wasn't doing it the right way. So luckily I didn't ask my mom for that blood pressure machine. Otherwise that could have been my life, 
You know, I already had the problem with constantly checking my heart rate. Now throw in the mixture of the, of the blood pressure thing. Oh my God, it would have been a nightmare. And you know, I do coach some people who constantly check their blood pressure with the machines, okay? Um, but I didn't have that. I would drive to Walgreens back and forth throughout the day. If I was nervous and anxious, I felt like I was gonna protect myself by seeing if my blood pressure was high, you know, so I could go to the hospital. All I was doing was just working myself up. If I was worried about having bad numbers, I was gonna have bad numbers. And that brings me to this. I had white coat syndrome. So when I would go to the doctor, which I did all the freaking time to get checked, excuse me, I had horrible numbers. <laughs> and we know how God awful that experience is. All it takes is one experience of that, getting told by the doctor like, oh wow, your numbers seem high, your heart rate's uh, 120 and your blood pressure seems to be 145 over 95 or 100. Uh, do you have a history of hypertension or heart issues in your family? And then that just freaks you out, right? Because you're already in a negative state of mind. Just like if you Google and you're worried about something and it says cancer or something like that, you assume that that's what's wrong with you. So whenever a doctor's saying that, it's like it was confirming my worst freaking fears for the first time. And it freaked the hell out of me. So then an association has been made up here, white coat syndrome, every time I had to go to the doctor even the night before I was like I hope my numbers aren't bad I hope they're not bad and guess what I'm like a loaded gun when I go in there you know I could just feel my heart rate like going crazy you know and I could feel my blood pressure getting more and more intense and those of you that have dealt with high blood pressure due to anxiety you know what that feels like you know what that feels like it's intense and they would put the thing on my finger and then they would do the cup and I just remember just like it getting crazy and sure enough every time my numbers would be horrible. So what were numbers like for me? Because I get this question a lot, just like I get a lot of questions about how fast is your heart rate? You know, a lot of people want to compare. So I'll be that guy today, I'll tell you. So for me, my blood pressure was very rarely ever, ever, ever normal, unless it was me just now waking up or if I'm extremely tired in the evening and maybe I took some Benadryl or something to try to get some sleep because my anxiety rarely allowed that. Um, throughout the day, you know, um, if I wasn't in fight or flight or having panic, we're talking about anywhere from like 135 to 145, sometimes even 150. And I know that seems absurd. It seems kind of crazy, but that was my top number. And the bottom number, we're talking about like 90 to 100. And that's like at rest, you know. And when I say at rest, I was still anxious, okay. I was still anxious. I never really got any peaceful moments. But that was just like me not in fight or flight. Now, whenever we're talking about panic attacks, I would have some crazy, crazy freaking numbers. We're talking about 160 to 180 over like 100 to 110. And I don't know if it ever got higher than that. I don't know. But luckily, I was healthy. I was a young buck. <laughs> you know what I mean? So my, I didn't have any heart problems. So therefore, I never died. I didn't have a heart attack. I didn't have any issues with this. I just had the fear of having that issue. So if you're dealing with this, know that anxiety can cause it. You need to get the initial reassurance from a doctor to find out that you're okay, that you're healthy, and then we gotta start moving on, okay? And just like the heart rate thing, you have to stop checking, okay? You have to stop checking. If you have health anxiety, if you have cardiophobia, and you've been told that you're fine, and you're, you're wanting to accept that anxiety is what's causing it, you have to start walking the walk and not talking the talk. You can't just sit here and say that you accept anxiety, but you're always checking your heart rate or your blood sugar or your oxygen levels or your blood pressure. You know, it confuses your subconscious. It sends those mixed signals that I was talking about the other day, right? You're trying to accept anxiety as the culprit for your symptoms, or your high blood pressure, then why are you checking it? So therefore, in my personal opinion, I guess that's why you're here, right? That's why you watch my videos. You probably will not recover from something like health anxiety if you constantly seek that external reassurance via checking the blood pressure, okay, or whatever vital that you're trying to check because you're going to always keep your subconscious in confusion, in a state of confusion. You're trying to get your subconscious to trust you whenever you say that you're healthy and that things are going to be fine and that you accept anxiety. You got to stop doing those things, right? We have to walk the walk. If I accept anxiety, why am I checking my blood pressure? And it's not just about checking vitals. Why am I Googling my symptoms over here? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing that, right? I have to show my subconscious the way. That's how you rewire. You need internal reassurance. You gotta be able to tell yourself that you're healthy and that you're fine and that be good enough for you. Stop relying on all these other things, right? 
because I know you're trying to protect yourself by the constant checking of your vitals. But ironically, you're not living and you're running in place, right? And that's the thing with this health anxiety thing. I tell people all the time, I love it. I love this little statement. You're trying to protect yourself with health anxiety, right? You're trying to stay alive. But ironically, in the process, you stop living. You're not living, okay? But I love you all. If you struggle with health anxiety, if you struggle with uh, any type of anxiety, like I, said, I had panic disorder, multiple panic attacks a day. You know, I had bouts of social anxiety. I had the, you know, the bouts of depression-like symptoms that come with it. And I struggled for years. I suffered. I suffered. <laughs> um, if you're trying to get better, if you're trying to move forward with your recovery, please check out my course, Elite Anxiety Bootcamp, and please check out my coaching program. All that information is going to always be in the description of my videos and in the first pinned comment. But again, guys, please leave me a like if you got value. Um, and let's see, if you've made it this far in the video, I want you to go down into the comments and in all caps, I want you to put, but I will walk the walk, right? I will walk the walk instead of just talk the talk. All right. But guys, remember the description has all my social media platforms. Subscribe if you're new. I like the video if you got value. And until next time, guys, keep fighting.